Nice. Uh oh. Did we freeze up already? Oh no. Come back, please. <laughs> You there? Are we still there? Uh, welcome to uh, the Geek Savants. It's a, a special supplemental episode. We've been talking a lot about uh, collecting comic books lately, and all of us got the comic bug. So we wanted to uh, bring in someone that is infamous in our in our lives as a comic book collector, and more than that, he works as an artist, uh, and and he does everything in the world to uh, to like push out classic comic books to the world. Uh, this is Matt Matt Ritchie. Matt, welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Good, man. So, hey, we've known you for a long ass time uh, since like we were working at a pizza restaurant called Bronco Billies, and that's where I I first met you. I didn't even a Back then, I didn't even know you collected comics. I didn't know you drew. I just, you used to come in with your family all the time. And we have like a lot of close friends. Like, like uh, your son is dating my, our buddy Clay's, uh, um, oh God, why, why can't I say it? Niece. Sisters. Yeah, yeah sister's, sister's daughter. Niece, right? um, but, uh, but yeah, that's how I knew you. And then like years later, I found out that you were an artist. I was like, oh my God, I, you're amazing. And then I found out you collected comics, and then you dr were dropping all the bombs of what you have. So I just figured you were the person <laughs> to talk to about this stuff. So, uh, yeah, when did, when did you start collecting comic books, like seriously or casually or whatever? I started seriously collecting in 1978. Wait, no, but how old are you though? Were you like two years I'm old? 50. <laughs> <laughs> You're 50. No, I was eight. Yeah. Wow, no fucking way. Um, yeah, old man, Matt. Oh, very right. <laughs> so, so when you first started collecting, was it? It wasn't for serious. It was for reading, right? I mean, at that point, you you were just a kid enjoying. Comic oh, I want. I wanted all the books, man. When <laughs> I got my first book, I wanted them all, and I started collecting. And uh, I I started collecting in um, Stockton when I lived there. I moved there. It's in second grade. And I was eight, and okay. uh, they had one of the first retail comic shops on the West Coast out there. What was Super that called? Early. Alice Comics. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's not yeah. still there, is it? Yep. Wow. I talked, I talked to him uh, a couple, few months ago before the COVID thing. He's like in his 80s. Wow. Wow. And he's still running the show? Or is it his son? Yep. Wow. Uh, nice. His son and his wife used to be there all the time. But then um, his wife passed away, unfortunately. Oh, and um, and his son is I may be in and out, but every time I've gone there in the last like almost couple decades, I always see Al, and okay. so I see it him. So um, so you wanted it all, Marvel, DC, all of it. Like you just you did there was there was no Marvel or DC. So for me, it was always like when I was a kid, it was Marvel, and when I was a, a, a younger adult, it was DC. And now I'm back on Marvel. Um, was it just everything? It was. For me, it was unique because it started off with Marvel books, and I loved them, and the, the Star Wars treasury and all that other stuff. And John, I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and um, I really, really connected with the Micronauts because I had the toys when I was a kid. So I had the books, and I had the giant size, Steve Ditko giant size, and I had all the early ones. But then when Owls opened up, it was ElfQuest. And really? uh, I was introduced to Wendy Penny's work, Black and White. So... I was even nine before I was already into the black and white stuff, already trying to draw the shit at my table. Uh, Winnie wow. Penny was my favorite artist, my first true favorite artist. And um, then, you know, soon after that was Kirby, and because I was picking up earlier books, you know, Kirby's bronze shit and finding the reprints, uh, the X Men reprints with that weird Kirby look that I didn't know what to make of. And then. When you um, were, uh, when you first started going to Al's, did he have the classic like bags and boards type of like display? How did he have his books so that you would be able to go find older books? He had a uh, back issues, man. Like in, in a, like boxes and nice, he had boxes, the yeah. earliest. Yeah. Those early bags and the boards with the actual cardboard, you know, the, you know, the sprayed white front and the cardboard back. Um, so I have really old bags in my collection. I've been changing them out with those old books. 
but it was the first like legitimate retail shop. They had a ton of like models and and D and D too, which I love buying D and D stuff there too. But comics were, you know, that was it, man. That's the shit I love the most. You I know, and I was buying that, everything. Like that history that you, that little like brief history of of who you were collecting when you were younger. I feel like that really influenced your art, and I didn't even think about about Wendy Peeney being an influence on you. But I can kind of see it in the line weights, you know what I mean? And the way she, she did curb lines and the, it, the simplicity, but yet it was very complex and like, you know, I mean, pretty advanced for indie stuff. Um, and then- with everybody. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what is, so, so you've been collecting for years and years. Uh, how big is your collection? Uh, and, and what are you in the hunt for now? Like what is the, the the shit that you're searching for all the time? Um, silvers, um, um, uh, mostly in bronze, but I'm, I don't buy that many books. I don't buy a lot of new books. I read them, uh, trades a lot if I want something like that, or I, or my local comic shops, they're some of my best friends. So I'll read monthlies in the shop and not have to buy them. But man, oh, uh, um, what's, do, what's that, uh, lo- what's that local shop again there, Matt? Matt? Crush. Yeah. Crush Comics. I used to, I used to work there. I worked there for fucking years. <laughs> like 15 you, you worked years. for Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. And that was interesting. I'll say, that's <laughs> as far as I'm going to uh, get that. It was interesting. I've known Mike for, since he opened, I was, uh, in that shop, uh, second day it opened. Um, I knew Mike's friends who he worked with at the, uh, San Leandro comic shop. Yeah, so I've known yeah. him for, I've known him for like thirty something years. Now. So you knew so. you knew Bobby the K. You knew uh, uh, John Watson was the owner of the co- of the comic shop, and then there was Chris, yeah. and then there was um, oh my god, there was one other guy, Clay's, Scott McAdam. Yeah, they Clay's Comics on A Street. I went to too. That's where I met my wife. Wow, Did I worked you, at Comic and Card Vault on Mission when I was when I was in college, you, and is, that was a real small shop. Every story so far is like you met your wife in a comic shop. Your entire life was influenced by comic books and D and D. That's awesome. Um, so, so is there a book that you're looking for that you're like, man, it's it's. So for me, I have like one book that's like I, I say would complete my life, but yeah. I I would just get it and then go on to the next one. But it's for me, it's like Daredevil one is like my shit uh, because yeah. he's my favorite character. Or I mean, you could see. Oh, he froze it. <laughs> I collect a lot of like key cap stuff. I just love Captain. But is there a character I love or Cap anything too. that you're like into? Look, that poster, I got at Crush Comics. So that's been with me since 1990, that weird poster, that Sankevich poster. Um, I love yeah, yeah. Is there a poster. Yeah. Is there a book or is it just open? Yeah, sequ- I got a, um, I got a book. I need an X-Men 4. Um, then I have completed my sub 15 run. Then I oh, wow. have one through 15 and the four yeah. I've had opportunities, but I've never kind of landed on the right grade at the right price. I'll what, get it uh, what's four? What is, what are they doing for? Um, first Scarlet Witch, first, um, Quicksilver. Oh, no. so first I Scarlet love that one. I love that, that is, one. That's so good. That's a classic cover. That's a great book. It's everything about that book just oh, I love it. by me, man. It's so the good. Second most expensive yeah. book in the run, though, man. It's, oh. That's why it's hard. And Outside it's not going to get any easier because they're making that Scarlet Witch show, too. So like that now that that's coming out, people are like trying to yeah. get that book actively. Do you remember a time like when collecting back issues was easy? Like, not yeah. expensive... And like guides came out once a year and there was no internet. It was way fucking easier. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you, here's an example right here. And I was glad, even though I was broke, I was in college and I've always made my own money. Um, I bought my own comics since I was a kid working. I was got a, a route, a paper out at 11. So I never stopped working from the day I was 11 till this moment. Um, but yeah, I was collecting back issues and I grabbed this one. <laughs> for 50 bucks in San Jose. Nice. And oh my God. I got it, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty low grade, but, um, and it's got a slight restoration of a little bit of glue on the spine, which I could actually get removed, which I'll probably do that and get it regraded. Wow. But it's worth a whole lot more than 50 bucks now, even at this grade and, and, uh, and, and, and restoration. So, so I was buying some back issues um, in the early 90s when I had a little bit of money. 
but the big thing I was buying was original pages. Yeah, and that's Matt has a like, Matt. Uh, I haven't seen him, but Matt has an incredible original page collection. If you, I know if he's you go if you go to Keys and Grails and my um, my page because I, I have my Rat One Three Six art page, my main page. But I started Keys and Grails for my comics. You go there, you'll see some of the page. Periodically, I put the. Um, uh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Periodically, I put up pages. Um, so and I what I love up, about uh, this. It too is that's your artwork in the in the uh, uh, price. Uh, yeah, what oh yeah, we, the corner boxes. Corner boxes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's your art as well. Which yeah, I, I, I drew all the corner boxes for every single post. Um, and and how how far ahead do you work on these? Do you, you don't have these heads at the ready, do you? Because I know that you've done like so many. Uh, There's so many of them. Yeah, it's so much work, man. I can't, and it's not my. And I have. Um, projects and show commitments and all kinds of artwork that I'm doing while I'm doing this. So this is like, I try to get ahead of these, but this is like a tremendous amount of time, you know? How, how often do you, you post on, uh, on Keys and Grails? Is it once a I week? I try to do six times a week. What the fuck? How do you have time to be drawing all those corner boxes, man? That's crazy. I, well, you're doing it in your, you're doing it in your iPad? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they take a, got, an hour or two, three hours of pop, depending on how much I'm drawing for them and stuff like that and how complex they are. But I'll do them before bed after I've worked pretty much all night in my studio. And then I'll sit wow. down and I, it, with, watch a show and, and just bang them out or I'll bang them out during coffee or something just to get a kind of a jump on my posts. So, I'm going out, how, so Keys and Grails is really interesting because I've noticed that you really jumped into this like hardcore and like what about what brought about that just all of a sudden I noticed that all of a sudden maybe like last year maybe it's been about hi Marcy it's maybe been like about a year or two but you really kind of like turned and went hard back into the life if you know what I mean and like all of a sudden you like you were like because I know you were not like spending money on this stuff and then all of a sudden I noticed oh, I've this always one. been spending money on this stuff. It's well, just, you, you, know, you, really, you now are really like in hardcore. You're hardcore now. Yeah, last few <laughs> years I've started getting back to get, the you know, investing in books, like really dropping big, big money on books. Right. Um, is that but I've never not bought books. Yeah. Yeah. Where did Keys I and Grails? I think the Keys and Grails has been a way to play it. Keys and Grails? Yeah. Keys, everybody knows the key comic is an important moment in comics. And, um, you know, like a key issue. Everybody's looking for key issues. Um, and then, you know, X-Men issue one, FF1, you know, GSX1 or, or FF48, you're, those are grails. You know, yeah. it's like it's beyond a key. It's, it's just massive, you know, you know. It's golden age keys, like for, you know, detective. So I got I to gotta ask, Matt. Is this is this a key or a grail? That's a grail. You know that. I got a grail. <laughs> All right. That's a grail. Yeah, got mine. Mine's like, not can... as nice. Oh, look at this! Oh, yeah. look at this. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll say this. I, I'll say this. Our dicks, our dicks are almost the same size. John doesn't even have a dick. I, I don't have any no dick. <laughs> <laughs> but Dave, I gotta ask you. You have one eighty and one eighty two. No, I had. That's the trifecta for that. I had 180 when I was a kid, and I had uh, you. You just showed us a book, and 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 I'd love for you to to show that in a second and to spoil it. But when I was in college, I f- I fucked up real bad, and I sold a lot of books. So I've had this was I had 180 and 182, sold them both, and then I never had this one. So when I was in yeah. a position to buy it, I bought it right. So I'm gonna go back and get another 180. But um, 180 is really spendy right now, man. It's kind of crazy. It's, it's all fucking crazy right now. So, so I got to ask you a question. Um, where do you get your books? Where do you enjoy buying your books? Do you do eBay? Do you go to stores, oh, yeah. do you to shows? All of it, just all of it. My, um, yeah, that's one thing, John, that I could address about like kind of how I've become a little more active in buying. Yeah. The market's changed and the way to get books has changed. And the way it's changed has been great on two levels. Um, number one is I've made more connections with the comic book community because I'm buying a lot of books and claim sales and auctions online. And you learn real quick who's reputable and who's not. And since I've been doing this for a couple of years online and having this keys and grails account and getting some like 
you know, notoriety and friendships through that. Um, it's been easier to get books anywhere, you know, and shit and people ship them in and you learn who sh- packages well and who doesn't. And the other thing is eBay, you know, is, is pretty clutch. If I'm buying a big, big book and I'm spending a lot of money and I, I will buy off of eBay or off of one of these claim sales and it's gotta be slabbed. So I kind of at least have a ballpark of the condition. It's gotta be legit. I gotta know the sources because, um, you know, it's, you don't want to get screwed. And then for real big books, I actually have a good friend who's got a monster collection that would make us cry. And he does a lot of, um, uh, like comic brokering for me. Like he'll broker deals for me. He knows who's super legit, what they want. He helped me get that 181 in a clutch time from a dude who was willing to break off a deal. So through that guy and a source like that, I will go, <laughs> that's when I get the big, big books. But if I'm spending under, a, you know, up to a thousand, I'll do it pretty much through the eBay or the claims. If it's going over a K, I, I kind of want to talk to people. And the Berkeley Comic Show, the, Ber- the specifically the one at the Berkeley Adult School, shout out to those dudes. That's the most legit show for book buying <laughs> you could get to in the Bay Area. They have, you, want a, you want an AF-15 or an FF-1? They have tons of them to choose from. I mean... The biggest players go there and it's just like ridiculous with great books and nothing else, only book dealers. That's all they do at Berkeley con. So when you're, when you're, uh, so I guess at at auctions and and claims, uh, there's a level of negotiating. Are you like a a hard negotiator too? Do you go to like the shows and you're like, I'll give you this for that or yeah, Uh, yeah, you just go. Like, like uh, I I go back and forth a little bit, but um, no, I could, I understand the market enough to know that I'm not trying to really, I try to drive it down, but I ain't trying to hound and, and, sure. and really go too, too much. So I, I'm right in the middle with that. I was always afraid to do that. And I was always like, I was just kind of wary of it because, you know, I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. But if I see something that's like inflated or, or something that like that, now that's the other thing at that Berkeley show, is it competitive? Is it like, yeah. like do other <laughs> yeah. Um, she got that teepee. She got the teepee in her. She got toilet paper. What's she got? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we're, we're good on teepee. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> I, I'm worried about you guys. So yeah. <laughs> I got all these um, comments in case you run out. Okay. So, uh, so uh, hey, now I, wait. I, I wanted to ask. I was afraid. Go ahead. I was going to ask. This goes to both of you guys, and I mean, now it has like grading has to have like changed, kind of or slabbing in, in the sense has to have changed how you can buy these books now, right? I mean, you feel better about buying it if it's slabbed, right? Are you scared? Do you, Matt, do you even buy books if they're not slabbed? Oh, yeah. I get raw yeah. books okay. all the time. But I don't buy raw books um, over a certain price without actually being able to handle the book. Um, if it's under 100 bucks, and I have no problem kind of, you know, you know buying something off of eBay or, or off an auction or something. But um, I get my best raw books from my local comic shops, which is Crush and Cape and Cow, which are the two books yeah. that I go to the most. Yeah. And that 181 I got from Aton at, at Cape and Cow. Oh, yeah. Aton's best, man. Well, you know, he's great because, like, like I've, I've known him for years, but he's also the guy that, like, uh, is really involved on Instagram and social media. So if he sees a post from someone that's like, I, hey, I, you know, I want this book, he's like, I got that book for you if you want it. And I'm like, that's yeah. didn't come true. And I didn't have to, it wasn't hard at all. The hardest part was spending the, the, the money. And <laughs> like, I thought I'd have a harder time convincing my wife, but she's like, fuck it, man. You've always wanted that book. It's your money. I don't give a shit. And I was like, okay. I think it comes from not having kids. Like, I think if I, if I had like a young kid, she'd be like, no, that's like, you know, two plus grand that, that could go towards that, you know? Well, my kid makes his own money and he's a grown person. So now let's talk about, can, can we talk about a uh, miles a bit? Like he yeah, followed sure. in your footsteps too, right? He's doing art. He's, he's killing it. Yeah. Man, he, like I, yeah, I, I, I think I once told him that I'm, I'm glad I don't have kids, but if I did have kids, I'd want that kid because he's just <laughs> fucking super cool, super talented. Um, and he does his own thing. Right. So, so he's, is, is that how he's making money now too? Like you say, he's, he's got his own money. He makes his own money. Is he doing oh, yeah, yeah. art full time? Yeah, well, almost full time. He spends some time in uh, L.A. working at a special effects studio. Um, okay. And then he's then he, you know he does um, 
Art makes he does great with that. Um, and we just had a father son show. He just he did really well with that, and he's been doing a lot of group shows. Yeah, showing at a level that no kid his age should be showing at. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but, how, uh, how old is Miles? He's got man? friends, and he, he's a talented, and b he's got friends in high places. So he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of opportunity, and he's using it really well. Yeah, he didn't he do a skateboard that uh, like a Spider Man skateboard that uh, what's his name Tom uh, Tom Holland has yeah Tom Holland has it right that's fucking yeah crazy. yeah that's he's a- yeah he's twenty one wow and that's all wood too right like most of his yeah. stuff is, is woodcut yeah it's crazy and then you do stuff you do like miniature stuff but you've done some larger size stuff it's, it's oh most- I've done giant things yeah I go okay. I go from huge to tiny and back again so and everything in between yeah yeah I mean I've seen some of your your uh, your collections the the tiny guitars that I'm like man I want one but I just want all of them so it's kind of well they're all they're all together in one ginormous seven foot guitar so. Oh, it's so crazy. That's a huge... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so, hey, are you, hey, Matt, did you finish? You're finished with all your heads, your uh, Marvel heads that you were going to do, your little yeah, ones? they were in uh, mine and Miles' last show at Spoke Art. Or oh, dude, I, I remember when you started that. I saw that up at the show, and I was like, oh, dude, I can't believe you finally called it done. You were like, I'm done with it. I these. called it done, yeah, at about 180 <laughs> so, heads. So, uh, so how has the, uh, the COVID thing affected your art at all? Is it just, are you just doing everything online or are you like, cause I mean, you do a lot of gallery shows too, right? I mean, so that's all yeah. done for now, right? No, uh, they, um, we actually had an opening in March on, on the 7th and it was my miles and I's second father son show together. And wow. the opening was insane. I mean, I thought it was going to be dead because you know, the COVID thing was starting to starting to ramp up, but I mean, there was a big line to get in. It was, it was insane how many people came through all night, super slammed. And soon after that, they kind of closed the doors because they had to, and everything right. went online. And then our next show, I didn't know what was going to happen. And our next show was this uh, Miyazaki um, mm-hmm. tribute show. And we've been doing that for years, Miles and I and a bunch of other artists. And this year was special because the... Um, Abrams released a big coffee table book, gorgeous. And Miles and I were going to fly out to New York, go to the show, do book signings because we're, we're in the book and stuff. And it all of a sudden, the whole thing stopped. But they put the show online. And then the, all the galleries I've been working with have been putting stuff online and um, selling like crazy. Like Miles and I sold our Miyazaki pieces and we sold the rest of our content at the recess, our show, um, online because, you know, you couldn't go to the gallery after the mid-march so and then i got um a bunch of shows lined up right now that i'm doing that are all going to go online and it's sales are working it's it's like wow. they're virtual thing i like this you know i wish i got to go to new york i wish we got to do the the show and the signing and all that but i'm glad that they didn't cancel the show i'm glad that people were able to to enjoy it so it's kind of just it's just kind of changed that thing. So it's all online until we could get people back in, I guess, the galleries again. So yeah, but yeah, I guess that's true. That the work didn't stop, and and for some people like John, uh, the work started again. John started fucking <laughs> commissions. I'm like like slow clapping, proud of John for fucking <laughs> turning it out. Hey, quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's true though. I like the work hasn't stopped. I've gotten a, like a couple of writing gigs and like. It's kind of, I don't want to say it's, it's easier. It's still uncertain as to like what's going to happen with comic books. Uh, but it does feel like everyone needs entertainment and content and they need to yeah. enjoy what they love. I mean, if you told me that I would be in quarantine and sitting around buying old comic books, I would have been like, fuck you, no way. But here I am. So let, show us another book. I, I told you to bring three. I, I brought a couple to show, but I wanted you to fucking... Uh, to show us a book or two. Yeah, I got so many around here. So I brought out, I brought out the uh, Hulk, the 181. No, that's old news. How how old were you when you bought that? Is that a recent or a mid? Yeah, this is a year ago. Okay. Because I never had this either. Yeah. So, and um, for me, I really wanted this. I wanted the whole, I, I wanted all three. So I got the 180, really sweet 180. And then my 182 has 
um, certified signature from Len Wein, who created Wolverine, mm-hmm. and from Herb Trimp, the first artist. And Herb Trimp drew Wolverine on it, and it's a, and that's a yellow labeled certified. So it's a remark. It's awesome book, man. It, yeah, that's a so you book. were you were present when he signed it. It was it like. I bought- I bought it certified. So Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was very happy to get that, man. That was that was insane. I just so that I just I, assumed that you were like, hey, over his shoulder being like, draw Wolverine right there. <laughs> yeah, and I, that was done a long time ago. Um it's actually an older slab. I'm gonna get it redone. But, okay. Um, but yeah, I was witnessed and he drew it and it's it makes that book really special, you know. I and that's I got a lot of nice sig books, like um, and then I do my own books too, that I've got a CG seed and slabbed of my own artwork. Um, Those are awesome, dude. Our last show with Miles and I, we, I had a, a whole wall of certified graded CGC books were all painted, you know, like every single cover was a painting. And I decided to do that as a frame. That's the way I framed that work. Yeah. Send it all into CGC and get it, you know, slabbed, but it was framed and then displayed on the wall. So. So, really so are you like a really good grader then? Because you, you have to know that that's a 9.8 before you pick it up and draw on it, right? So like you're pretty good at judging. I wasn't worried about the grades on those, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Because I expected, I got it most of, they were all, I think 58% of them were 9.8s and then I had one 9.4 and then 9.6s. So I was extremely careful in treating, handling the book and covering it and keeping them clean. Because they're the blank variants, you know? The, sure, yeah, yeah. So, and I just, and I attacked it like I would attack painting, too. So, I mean, really clean, full acrylic paintings on these things. Um, wow. As I would on wood or, or a canvas, but just use the book. And it was nice after they, you know, cured, I, you know, sent them in. And I have an account with them. And they, you know, put my name, you know, you know, signed and sketched by Matt Ritchie. And, and it had the yellow label. And. It just added a, um, an extra something, you know, for the, you I'll, know, for I'll say the this too. I, I just started like collecting keys and grails and I, uh, I picked up a book. I picked up this book. You, you, you know that book. Oh yeah. 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 So I picked it up and it's, it's an eight and it was awesome. And I was like, Oh fuck. I love it. Cause this is another book that I, I didn't buy when I was a kid that I wanted. And, uh, it showed up and there was a fucking hair in the slab, like a long woman's hair. So I contacted CGC and they were like, send it back. We'll fix it. Yada, yada, yada. I just got it back today. And, uh, you know, they just, they took it out and re-slabbed it. Um, yeah. But they're really good. They're, they're like what you would consider reputable. I know that there are probably, there's always human error everywhere, right? There's, and, I've been, they're, they're the best we got right now. I, yeah. I, I tripped because I drew, um, uh, did a painting on a Marvel 1000 of Jack Kirby. Um, I did a Jack Kirby and a Stan Lee portrait on these Marvel 1000s. I sent the Kirby in and he got a 9.8. And I had spilled paint on the cover of that thing, uh, like a, a big blotch of black paint and the white of it. And seriously, exacto scratched out, smoothed it out. Wow. How they got a nine, that was not a 9.8 book. But I got a nine eight on it. The Stan Lee book is flawless, as far as I can tell, and it was a nine six. And then I did a variant cover for Vault Comics, and for one of their uh, books called Sarah. It's a beautiful book. I got my copies of Sarah, and so I submitted a copies for uh, myself and a friend for the blue label. You know, I just sent it in, and it came back nine six. No idea. It was the <laughs> best copies I had of that book. So then I said, okay, this is weird. So I, I slapped my SIG on a couple of copies and then sent it through my account, my, my artist account. And they're not as nice. They were the second hand ones from the nine sixes. Got nine eights on those. So I don't know huh. why. It, maybe it was because they gave me a, a you know, a break because I have an artist account, but to me, that's not, con- that's not consistant. So sure. with CDC, it's, I think it's the best we got, you know, and for the most part, um, I, I agree with the majority of their grading, but there's times I, I don't even know what's going on and a hair should not be in your book, man. That's yeah, like, yeah. 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 That's like, a, 
problem, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, luckily they took care of it. They paid for everything. They paid for all the shipping and it doesn't cost them much to pop it open and fix it, right? Um, but show me yeah. another book. I need, to, I need to see the goods. You, you showed me something at the top of the hour before we were recording and I was like, oh, fuck, I got a story about this one. Is it this one? No, no, no. Or- the other one, the spotlight. Ah, yeah. So, <laughs> like I said, this one I picked up for 50 bucks. So that's like, that's, that's gains, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And then I, I had a bunch of books. I have a lot, so I just didn't know what to grab. But um, I did get this one just recently. So here it oh. is. That looks super clean. What's, what, what kind of condition is that? So I looked at this. I thought I had a seven. And when I, was, I bought this from Josh at Crush, he sent it home with me to look at. And I thought I had a seven until I cracked it open. And then I saw some coloring in the pages. Um, the back cover had, um, some, some problems with it. So I think it's a solid five. So and you say it was a seven, it was a seven in a case. It was seven in a, no, it was, it's loose. It's loose. Oh, like I see. I okay. My, my, my initial assessment was a seven and I, it presents as a seven, but sure. I know when I put it in and they, they look through it, it won't go in as a seven. Right. So, uh, we negotiated a fair price for this. Uh, um, that's closer to what a market value would be for about a five. Okay. And this is to me a great five to get because I like books that I get that are lower grade and more affordable. But when you have a situation where the cover is so pristine, it presents like a higher grade book. Right. You know, so, and it, and then you, oftentimes you get a better value from a mid grade book if it does present higher. And this one is really, really sweet. So, very so, pleasing. um, that was another book I had when I was a kid and I sold it. I sold that and uh, Astonishing Tales is at 25. Is that Deathlock? Um, oh, and- yeah. I just got one of those uh, slabbed in, in uh, 7.0. I'm, I'm, I'm in the hunt for that again because I had it as a kid and I love Deathlock and Perez and all that. I mean, just that yeah. cover is so fucking striking. I, I, I need it. Um, Perez's but- very first published work too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which is kind of a dick punch in a way, because I would have loved it if it wasn't his first, but I just love Deathlock, right? But now it's even harder yeah. because it's, it's his first work. So, Well, he's having a signing coming up too with CGC, so all those books have gone up in price. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. See? He's sending them in at CGC from the in-house, so they're buying them at an inflated rate, and then they're sending them out. And that's a hard wow. book to get at a good price right now. It's kind of and steep. and in good condition. Like a lot of the books in that time period are just fucked. Like yeah. so many people didn't really give a shit at that point. Um, so do you do you, uh, you buy? Do you trade? Do you sell? Do you just or do you keep it all? Like when you buy it, are you like always in the hunt to upgrade or do you care? I put a lot of books in with Josh at Crush for commission. Um, okay, and they're but they're mostly books that are in that kind of like. One book I let go into that commission, though, was the uh, Thor 337, the first beta. Yeah. I, I felt weird about that one. So I actually went and got um, – I, I bought it, and I bought it in a super high-grade signed. <laughs> so I just said, all right, I let that one go, but I, I'm going to get it back better. But the problem is is that um, – yeah, and I brought some great ASMs in there. And he's made – when he gets the money for that, I apply it to my CGC fees when I got big, big books I want slab. And I usually bring in books that – that um that he'll sell on a commission that are in the kind of ten to hundred dollar range. Okay. And I brought a lot of books in there for him to do, and then I just apply. I just say keep it, keep keep it all, and then we'll get that back when I when I give you a stack of you know books to go into CGC to get graded because it's very expensive to get graded. Yeah. Books graded. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um. Well, we're we got to wrap up soon, but uh, before we go, hey, I wait, wait. Here's here's my <laughs> one good book. Here's my one good book. This is it. I got my my Marvel Comics record and my Avengers Four reprint from this record. I, I love that you got the record with it. That's the I best do. part. I, it's so awesome. Well, dude, Matt, I t- I bought this at an est- I bought this at an estate sale, right, for like three bucks, and I was hyped because I was thinking, oh, there might be some samples on this thing. And then I like, oh, I'm like looking at the back, and it's like, oh, it comes with a with a comic book. And I'm like, oh, let me see. I like was at home, and I'm like, well, let me see if the comics in there. And sure enough, the fucking book is in there. 
It's a fucking it's, badass. And it's, eight, and it's a fucking eight point five, which is crazy. Dude, too. that was a, if that was an eight point five, and it wasn't the record reprint, that would be like. I know. That's I a know, four thousand dollar book if it's the actual four, not record reprint. I that's know. like I, hey, you I know had what? my eyes on a seven zero, and that was over three thousand dollars. What's rad about this though is that I mean, for a reprint, dude, it's five years after this issue originally came out. So yeah. I mean, not yeah. like not like fifteen years. I mean, this shit is like hella close to like the time this actually dropped. You know, you know what's crazy? Like, well, drop? It's still worth some. And you know what's crazy too is it's only in that condition now because it was sandwiched in that fucking oh dude. If, so I pulled that um, thing out. I was like, oh oh, look at this thing. <laughs> it was like in perfect. I was like, this is incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, I'm actually my one, my one good too. book. That's my one good book. Yeah, I it, bought it for three but, bucks. Avengers four is is on in my list. Uh, I'm trying to think of other books. Ooh, hey Matt, what about a Ninja Turtles? You got a Ninja Turtles? I got a one. Yeah. yeah. First print. <laughs> Third, and then I got okay. a second. I got a um, second print too, but they're both super high grades, nine and eights. Nice. Cool. So, so Matt, uh, thanks for, for joining us. Uh, so tell us, where can people find your artwork, man? Okay. Um, Instagram, at R-A-T, like a rat, 136. And then, and then key and, Keys and Grails? Keys and Grails. Yeah, and just like it's, like it's spelled. Keys, as in like a lock, and Grails as a goblet. <laughs> keys and Grails. As in the cup of Christ. <laughs> right on. Well, dude, it's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, I can't wait for people to, to uh, hear about your addictions and uh, John and our, my growing addiction for comic books. It's so weird because, uh, you know, I've been collecting contemporary comic books. I hadn't thought about going back in time and, and picking up the stuff that I loved as a kid, but, but here we are. So. It's the most fun, man. And let's stay in touch with this comic thing and maybe collaborate and get some more information shared and artwork and all that other stuff. <laughs> he's yeah, saying yeah, he wants to, he wants to buy that book off. He's what he's saying. Hey, <laughs> let's, uh, let's yeah, yeah. When we weren't he's recording, you have any variant covers you you need done? Um, <laughs> I work for comics. <laughs> you work for comics. There it is. There it is. I love that. Um, cool, cool. Well, hey, well, we'll keep in touch uh, and be please. We you're, you can be on the show anytime you want, man. Man, I appreciate you guys. Man, great seeing you guys yeah. again. Hey, thanks, yeah, good buddy. To you too, good to man. see you. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll catch up with you soon, buddy. All right. All right, buddy.